It was around a year ago when I had my wake-up call. Elon Musk had officially taken ownership of Twitter and laid off a substantial number of employees, even Twitter executives. News of Twitter potentially being shut down quickly spread online, and Twitter itself was buzzing, everyone frantically trying to figure out what the future holds for their favorite platform. News of Twitter potentially being shut down quickly spread online. And I was with a friend of mine when the news broke, and amidst it all, I rushed to tweet verbatim. I don't know what I would do without this bird app. It's funny now, but I remember genuinely being afraid. I had been an active Twitter user for years at this point. I was part of a community. It was one of my main sources of entertainment, and it felt like a big part of my life was being taken away from me. This was my brain on social media. I was addicted, and social media addiction is a real issue, an issue that many people like myself might not be aware they suffer from. I've had social media for around half my life at this point, having only been 10 years old when I first created my Instagram account. And in my time here at Towson, I've also conducted research on computer-mediated communication and the effects it has on us offline. But I'm speaking with you all today to share that by becoming aware of the addictive aspects of social media and the effects it has on our mental health, we can take back control over our minds, find alternate ways to spend our time, and delete our distractions. Now, my strong feelings about Twitter being shut down weren't exactly my fault. You see, these apps are designed to reel you in and keep you hooked. One of the aspects that makes social media so addictive is the dopamine cycle. According to a study published earlier this year of 2023 in the Scripta Journal, when users engage with social media platforms, it triggers the release of dopamine, which follows the brain's reward pathways, giving users a feeling of satisfaction. The dopamine cycle occurs when our brains associate our social media usage with pleasurable experiences, then craves it during times of distress. Therefore, we look to social media as a crutch or a way of comforting ourselves. And the cycle is ongoing as our dopamine levels fluctuate with our social media usage. An article from the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health draws a connection between the flow state and social media. They state that flow is a positive state of mind and is often reached when one is being highly productive. If you've ever been in that flow state, then you know. It can feel really good when working on an assignment or a big project. But when we get in that flow state with social media, it can be detrimental when our attention should be focused somewhere else. In fact, web developers are well aware of this flow state and they aim to get us in that state through their apps. They strive to make us so immersed that we forget about time and space while on their platforms and they achieve this through the flow technique. To keep us hooked, this flow technique is often built straight into a platform's algorithm. Many apps such as YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram share that same endless scrolling feature where you will never run out of fresh content. And this algorithm tends to lead to what is called mindlessly scrolling. In that same article from the International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, they state that by endlessly scrolling down, the user is becoming more and more immersed. And this behavior is enhanced when the user finds something rewarding, such as a funny or an interesting video. This also ties into the dopamine cycle as we're constantly seeking that reward and that dopamine hit. We wind up spending more of our time on these apps, mindlessly scrolling for hours on end. These apps are meticulously designed to keep us on them, making our usage feel routine. But because our usage is so routine, we often don't think twice about the things we consume and how it might be impacting our mental health. As I mentioned before, the dopamine cycle plays a huge role in how social media is made to be addictive. The downside to this cycle, though, is what psychologists refer to as a dopamine deficit. This dopamine deficit occurs when users experience sadness as dopamine falls below its normal levels, and it often manifests as anxiety or even times depression. And to try and restore dopamine levels, users tend to increase their social media usage. In addition, too much social media can also create a false sense of happiness, as there are large amounts of dopamine being released, only mimicking that feeling of happiness. Another aspect that can negatively impact our mental health is social comparison. There's two types of social comparison. Upwards being when you look up to someone and think, how can I get like them? They're doing so much better than me. 
And then downwards being the opposite, when you look down on someone and think, well, at least I'm not doing as bad as them. I play the drums, and because of my love for the drums, I would watch tons of drum content online. I looked at these videos as a form of inspiration, but inspiration could quickly turn to feelings of envy or self-doubt, especially when those child prodigy videos would come up on my feed. <laughs> I would think to myself, oh, I can't play that. Oh, they're so much better than me. How is this kid only 10 years old and he's playing on tour with Adele? <laughs> All these negative thoughts that I was having due to this form of upward social comparison. But we can't talk about social comparison without talking about FOMO. If you don't know, FOMO is the fear of missing out. And I'm sure in one way or another, we've all had this feeling. The FOMO that I felt from using social media was strong, but I hadn't realized how much control FOMO had over me until I logged off. When I first deleted social media, I got such strong urges to re-download the apps and see what was going on in my friends' lives. I was so anxious. I mean, I could literally feel the urge to use social media again all throughout my body because remember, I was addicted. So this was the withdrawal. You start to think about all the things you might be missing out on. Will anyone even notice my absence? What if Beyonce announces a new album and I am the last to hear about it? <laughs> the fear of missing out is real. But after some time, I realized the things I felt I was missing out on just weren't as important as I thought they were. FOMO is a big component of what keeps us on these apps, feeling like we always need to know what's going on in the lives of others, people who we otherwise wouldn't think about. Well, I found a lot of peace in not knowing, and I'm still well aware of all the things that go on in the lives of those who matter most to me. It's so easy for us to get wrapped up in this world we've created online, but we must not lose sight of what truly matters, and that is being present in the real world. Our online profiles are carefully curated and typically only showcase our best moments. Here's mine, but this is only the part of me that I choose to share on the internet. And I'm sure a lot of you would agree that your social media presence doesn't directly align with your personal life, and that's okay. That's honestly how it should be. And while curating these online personas and participating in the digital world helps us stay connected and stimulated, it could be beneficial to turn off your phone every once in a while and find other ways to spend your time. Since deleting social media, I read my first leisure book in almost 10 years. <laughs> if you don't know, leisure is like a book that I chose and read from cover to cover. <laughs> but I loved reading as a kid. I always had a book with me to the point where I would read myself to sleep or sneak read books under my desk in class. And I realized it was around the time that I got social media that I stopped reading. Well, logging off again gave me the mental clarity to put my time towards the things that bring me joy, reading being one of them. And since then, I've come to feel more accomplished than before. Another thing we lose to social media are those day-to-day -day human interactions with one another. Since deleting social media, I have become hyper-aware of how much control it has over other people. I get into an elevator, and the person already in there rushes to grab their phone and starts scrolling through Instagram. Walking to class, I see so many of us looking down, so glued to whatever is on that screen. And the worst for me is when I'm actively engaging in conversation with someone, and they can't seem to put their phone down long enough to really listen to what I have to say. It's unsettling to me how disconnected we've become. And since deleting social media, I've realized that our social media usage has made us less social than ever. Well, I know that because of our social media usage, most of our attention spans also are not very long now. And some of you might just be sitting here wondering what your high school best friend posted on their Instagram story. But just stay with me a little longer. I promise I'm almost done. I want you to remember that these apps are designed to be addictive, so you shouldn't feel guilty for being addicted to them. Of course, 
I can't control what you do. And I don't necessarily want you to delete social media forever. But I hope that from having this discussion today, we can all be more mindful of our social media usage. I was once convinced I couldn't live without it. And there might be some of you out there who feel that same way. But know that you don't have to feel that way. Please do not let time pass you by. And remember that there is so much more to life than whatever is on that screen. So take back control and don't let it control you. Thank you.